Hello and welcome to this webcast. My name is Michalis Famelis and I will be talking to you about Mint, a graphical tool for interactive model management developed at the University of Toronto with funding from the Nexus project. It is a collaborative work of Alessio Di Sandro, Rick Salei, myself and Marcia Cecek. Our topic is model management, which is the management of multiple heterogeneous software artifacts using things like models, relationships between them and operators that work on them. There exist already several model management frameworks such as Epsilon, Atlas and others. What they do is focus on programming required to prepare for model management. What we propose is a graphical user environment that is interactive and allows users to perform model management tasks. The reason is that not all tasks can be fully automated. For example, sometimes you need to manually verify a match and also you need to be, we need to be able to provide users with automated support for exploration and rapid prototyping, such as for example when working on the use of transformation. And we believe that all of this should be done at the right level of abstraction, i.e. using mega models, which are a special kind of models that can represent collections of models and the relationships between them. So MINT stands for Model Management Interactive. It is an integrated development environment that provides users with two important characteristics. Specifically, there is an interactive graphical user interface that works on two levels. The instance level, where users work with models and the relationship between them, and the type level, where users can work with metamodels and relationship between those. Mint also provides users with automated assistance for using things like mega model operators, type coercion, retyping, and others. The main artifacts that a user would interact with in Mint are things like models, relationships between them, transformations, an editor for what we call a model interconnection diagram, which is the graphical representation of a mega model, as well as Eclipse's extension points and the Mint API. We are going to structure this presentation from the perspective of usage of Mint. Specifically, we're going to talk about three different user roles, the tier 1 user, which is the end user, tier, us tier 2 user, which we call the customizer, and tier 3 user, which we call the toolsmith. We will also be talking about three additional peripheral roles, specifically how Mint can be used from the perspective of someone who does research, as well as the perspective of the administrator, someone who manages a Mint installation, and the perspective of the contributor, who contributes code to the Mint user base. So let's start with the tier one user, which we will be calling the end user. This is a user who mainly interacts with Mint through the use of the instance model interconnection diagram. Specifically, an end user or a tier one user uses Mint to do model management tasks. As we said, they work at the instance level and uses pretty fine types and transformations that the Mint installation comes preloaded with. Now Alessio will do a demo of a simple model management scenario. Hi. My name is Alessio and in this simple model management scenario, we'll show you the basic artifacts a user deals with in Mint. This is an empty Mint editor at the instance level. On the right, there is a palette with the basic actions available. Let's start by creating a new model. A pop-up appears showing the available model types in the current Mint installation. We click on class diagram and we name it 1. In our first class diagram, we just want to create a class named A and a second class named B. We save and we can go back to our mid editor where our created model appears as a yellow box. At any point one can double click on it to open it again. We're now going to create a second model, a second class diagram. We name it 2 and in this one we're going to create a class named B and a class named C. Sorry. Back to the mid editor. What we want to do now is to merge these two class diagrams since they share a common element B. To do this, first we need to create a mapping with, which connects the elements that overlap. To do this, we click on new binary rel and we draw a relationship from one diagram to the other. We call this relationship match. In the mid editor a relationship appears as a blue arrow. We can double click on it to open the relationship view where the model endpoints appear as bigger yellow boxes. And on the right 
we have a tree view showing the contents of each model. We want to connect the classes named B and to do this we simply drag and drop them to the relationship view and click new binary link to create a connection between them. We can save and go back to our mid editor. The mid is an interactive environment. If we right click on an element we can see the list of operations available for the selection. For instance if we right click on the relationship we just created we can see that there is a model merge operation available. Let's click on it to execute it. What it does, it generates first of all a merged class diagram with the classes A, B and C. Then it generates two traceability relationships from the original class diagrams to the merged one which show how the merge has been done. And third, it generates a green ellipse which represents the execution of an operator and matches its inputs with its outputs. From here, what we want to do is to generate some Java code out of the merged class diagram. To do this, we can right click on it and select the operator CD to Java to generate a Java model that corresponds to the class diagram. This is just a model for now. We can then right click again and select Java to file. This operator generates the actual Java text file. We can double click to open it and as you can see it's just a stub but it gives you an idea of the transformation. Instead of running this as a two-step operation we can right click on the merge class diagram and execute the operation Java to file directly. When an operator is marked as a conversion like CD to Java Mint can infer other operators available through it and run the conversion in the background, like it happens in this case. This is called type coercion and it's a form of reuse which is complementary to the usual type inheritance. To summarize, we have shown a mid editor at the instance level, its basic elements, models, relationships and operators, we have shown how to run operators and how type coercion can help reduce the number of operations involved in a transformation chain. We now return to the perspective of the user roles of the different ways to use Mint. We will be focusing on the tier 2 user, which we will also be calling the customizer. A tier 2 user is able to do everything the tier 1 user does, but also extend Mint in some particular ways. Let's look at them. The role of the Tier 2 user, also known as the customizer, is to prepare Mint for particular model management tasks that then the end user can employ to do model management. A Tier 2 user can also be seen as a power user, who is comfortable working at both the instance model level and the type level of the mega model of meta models. The customizer is able to change Mint by adding new types and transformations to it. And there's two ways to do this. An online way, where the customizer interacts with Mint via the type model interconnection diagram and an offline way where Mint is extended using the predefined extension point mechanism provided by Mint through Eclipse's extension point system. Alessio will now demonstrate the online customization. In our second scenario, we'll show online customizations at the type level and some advanced usage of operators that work on entire mega models at a time namely filter, map and reduce from functional programming. This is a mid editor at the type level. It is accessible through the mint menu at the top. This type mid shows model types, relationship types and operators that are available in the current mint installation. For instance, we can see the class diagram model type we used in our previous scenario together with the CD to Java and Java to file operators. Let's switch to a mid editor at the instance level and suppose our company is an automotive company that keeps track of its modeling artifacts using mega models. A model with a mid label is in fact a mega model and this allows hierarchical organization of our models. If we double click on it, we can see it contains a number of models, a number of class diagrams, state machines, a UML deployment diagram, and a number of relationships. Let's open a class diagram 
and we notice that some of its attributes are set as public. This is a bad practice, so our goal for this scenario is to extract all class diagrams from this mega model and refactor them to have gather methods instead of public attributes. First of all, we want to extract the class diagrams from the car mega model. To do this, we right click on it and select the filter operator. Filter allows you to specify a type and will extract all models and relationships that are of that type. So if we select class diagram, filter will generate a second mega model which contains only our four class diagrams. Now we want to use filter again to separate the class diagrams that need refactoring from the ones that don't. Let's go back to our type level where we will create a new model type that is a subtype of class diagram. Let's call it CD public attributes. When you create a subtype in Mint, you can either extend the meta model of the super type or add a constraint or both. In our case, we will just add an OCL constraint that is true when a class diagram has a public attribute. We don't want to extend the meta model. Here it is, a new model type has been created that can be used for filtering. We will also create an additional model type, which we call CD no public attributes. And this will contain the negation of the property we just specified. With this created, we can go back to the instance level and run a filter operation specifying the newly created CD public attributes model type to get a mega model containing only the class diagrams that need refactoring. We will also run a filter operation specifying CD no public attributes to get the other two. We have a refactoring transformation written using the Henshin graph transformation language, which will create a getter function next to a public attribute and transform it into a private attribute. What we want to do is to run this refactoring transformation on every class diagram contained in this mega model. To do it, we will run a map operation selecting add getters. Add getters creates a refactored class diagram and a tra traceability relationship. So running it within a map operation will generate a mega model of refactored class diagrams, this one, and a mega model of traceability relationships. Let's take a look at them. For instance, we can click on the power window class diagram, which has been refactored, as you can see, there is a get state gather function next to the to the original attribute which has been made private if we open the traceability mega model we can see that it contains only the traceability relationships the blue arrows the model endpoints are externally referenced as identified by this little icon on the bottom left what we can do now is to union the refactored class diagrams together with the ones that didn't need refactoring. To do this, we select both mega models and we run a simple union operation, which will union them into a single mega model containing all of our four class diagrams, some of which have been refactored. Like in our previous scenario, we want to merge these four class diagrams into a single one because they overlap, and then we want to generate some Java code out of it. We first need to create mapping relationships between the class diagrams based on elements with the same name. Let's run a map operation specifying CD match as the argument. This will create a match relationship based on the same name for each pair of models. As you can see, let's take a look at, an, at one example. For instance, here, the class InfoController in the ACC 
class diagram refactored has been trans has been matched with the class info controller in the in the infotainment class diagram remember that this mega model contains only the match relationships so we first need to union it with the class diagrams and from here we can run a final reduce operation selecting model merge as the argument this will apply model merge to two class diagrams at a time until there's only one left and we can see the result here where all our four class diagrams have been merged into a single one and you can see also the result of refactoring two of them now about the java code generation we want to do it differently from the previous scenario where we just ran the cd to java operator to get a java model this is operational it follows a certain algorithm while we want to do it differently we want to do it declaratively we want at the type level define a mapping between the class diagram meta model and the java meta model to do it we click on new binary relationship type and we draw a relationship from class diagram to java we call this cd to java rel we can double click to open it and it shows you the relationship view it's a bit different from the instance level because the tree view on the right shows meta model elements so what we want is we want to transform a class diagram into a package and it is as simple as creating a link between them we want a class in the class diagram to become a class in java and we want the name of a class to become well the name of a class in java this is simple enough for, for our purposes so we can save it and go back to the instance level where we have a special operator that takes that relationship type into account and we'll use it to transform the class diagram into a java model as you can see package has been created and classes the cd to java rel that we just created has been used to drive this transformation from here we can again run the java2 file operator to get an actual java text file which looks like this to summarize we ran operators that work on entire mega models such as filter map and reduce to do our model management tasks additionally we customized the type level at runtime adding new types that were necessary for our tasks such as cd public attributes and cd to java rel alessio has demonstrated online customization of mint using the type mega model as we said earlier mint can also be customized offline using eclipse's extension point technology in this small example we are showing the extension point for the merge operator implementation specifically as you can see at the top the class that implements the merge operator is given and at the bottom, we give the input and output types of the operator. We now go back to the user roles, the different kinds of ways that Mint can be used. We are now going to be talking about the tier 3 user, which we will be calling the Toolsmith. The Toolsmith is a user of Mint who is able to customize Mint to create specialized model management tools that solve domain-specific problems. This is a user who interacts with Mint at all the levels, including the Tier 1 and the Tier 2, but additionally, they can work with Mint at the API level, creating code that adds new behavior, such as, for example, a new reasoner or new visualizations. I'm now going to be demonstrating Moomin, 
an incarnation of Mint that emphasizes the customizations to the user interface, custom solvers, and integration with Henshin tra model transformation engine. So here is Moomin. Moomin is a customization of Mint that allows you to reason about design decisions in models. So recall earlier the automotive example. This here is a model that allows you to reason about design decisions in the context of a controller that controls an automotive power window, basically the window of a car. As you can see here, this is represented as a state machine, and some elements in the state machine are annotated with maybe. This means that the, these elements will only be included in the model if the appropriate decisions are made. In Moomin, we represent design decisions here on the outline, and you can see that this particular model has attached to it three design decisions. For example, we could highlight either of them and show what they entail. Decision 1 can be resolved in three different ways safe, easy, and the delegate way. And I just made Moomin highlight and color the different alternative ways of doing it onto the model. We could also highlight w w only one of them. So for example, I could say, what does it take to, choose the, to make the selection delegate? And I can highlight the alternative in the diagram that would basically say that if you made that decision in that particular way, you would have to include these elements that are, that are colored green, and you would have to exclude the ones that are grayed out from the model. Moomin also allows you to actually make those decisions. So for example, I could go back to the model and say that I actually want to make the decision to make the decision one by choosing this particular alternative, in which case I can select choose this alternative and refine. Moomin will create this new version of the model where decision one has been completely removed because we just made it and you can see the appropriate elements have been either kept or removed. Of course, Moomin keeps full traceability, so I can access both versions of the model. So what we have seen here is extensions to Mint by using the Mint API that allowed us to first express design decisions, highlight them, and make them. These are all tasks that a toolsmith would be doing to create domain-specific incarnations of Mint for specific purposes. In Moomin, we have also extended Mint in an additional way. We have included support for an automated reasoning engine, specifically the Z3 SMT solver. This allows us to check properties of models that contain design decisions. So for example, consider the property where we're interested in, in finding out whether it is possible to have edges that start and end at the same state, which could be an indication of non-determinism. In Moomin, we're allowed to express such a property uh, by using Z3's SMT lib language, and here I have expressed this particular property. Having expressed the property and attached it to the model, I can now check the property with Moomin. In this particular case, Moomin says that the result of, of checking the property is maybe. That means that depending on how I make the particular design decisions that are included in the model, I might end up with a model that satisfies the property, or I might end up in a model that violates the property. Moomin proposed to show me the case where the property is violated, i.e. it proposed to show me a counterexample. So if I hit he if I hit yes, Moomin will produce the counterexample. And you can see that this particular in this particular scenario, design decisions have been made in such a way that we end up with two parallel edges, which violates the property. You can see that Moomin also indicates visually that the result of checking the properties may be by putting this little icon to the model in the main model interconnection diagram. An additional extension to Mint that is supported by Moomin is that we can actually enforce the property. So in this case, I can right click again on the model and say refine by constraint. This will automatically make all necessary design decisions such as the property is not violated. And you can see here that certain design decisions are no longer available. Just like before, Moomin keeps explicit traceability, so all of the different models are available in the main model interconnection diagram. Finally, the last extension to Mint that I want to demo is the integration with the Henshin model transformation engine. Consider the case where you would want to apply transformations to your models. This is a simple transformation expressed in uh, Henshin's model transformation language. Basically what it does, it looks for the pattern where a state has an incoming transition and there is no other transition that is also incoming to the state. Uh, this is called a negative application condition. 
if the transformation finds this pattern and the anti-pattern is not found, then what the transformation does is it takes an action from the transition and it puts it as a, a entry action into the state. Applying model transformations to models that have design decisions attached to them is a non-trivial process and it's called lifting and it's described in more detail in my thesis. In Moomin what we've done is we have implemented the lifting technique and done this using Henshin and integrated everything into Moomin. So, into Mint. So therefore what we can do now is we can apply transformations directly on models that have design decisions. And I can do this using Mint's context menu. As you can see, Mint keeps full traceability uh, like previously, so I can now uh, examine the contents of the transformation. So now we can look inside the contents of this transformed model. And as you can see, um, Moomin has appropriately transformed this model so that no design decisions no design decisions were made, but the contents of the model have been appropriately refactored. So for example, you can see that um, certain actions have moved into the appropriate places, condition, uh, conditioned on the different decisions that can be made. So to summarize, we have extended Mint in a, in a variety of ways to create Moomin, which is a particular incarnation of Mint that handles models that have design decisions attached to them. What I've talked, what I've shown you is A, how to express decisions, B, how to make decisions, C, how to check properties, and D, how to transform models. And Moomin does all of that while at the same time keeping full traceability and doing this in an interactive way uh, that supports uh, working with models with design decisions. Having seen how to use Mint from the perspective of the end user, the customizer, and the toolsmith, we now focus on the use of Mint to do research. As a researcher, you can use Mint for various purposes. For example, if you're doing an empirical study, you can configure Mint with specific model types and operator and give it to the people taking part in your user study and you can observe them doing various model management tasks. You can also use Mint as a, bench, uh, a workbench in which to do case studies. I have done this myself in the context of my PhD dissertation. And finally, you can use Mint to support doing experiments and in the software engineering group at the University of Toronto, we have done this extensively. We've used Mint to do scalability tests and to perform experiments with many input independent variables. And you can also do a little bit of statistics with Mint. Here's a small example of the uh, configuration for experiments for a paper we wrote in 2014. On the right, you see the kind of input that you need to give to Mint's experimental driver f uh, that defines, for example, the different uh, independent variables and various statistical measures. The output of the experimental driver can be seen on the left. This is a scalability experiment that assesses a particular technique. Finally, let's talk about installing, maintaining and contributing to Mint. From the perspective of the administrator, i.e. someone who installs and maintains Mint, here's the few things that you need to know. Uh, all information and requirements can be found on the GitHub wiki page. Basically, all you need is the latest version of Eclipse, the latest version of Java, plus some additional dependencies. If you plan to use Mint as an end user or a customizer, all you need is the binary packages that are available through our update side, plus some additional external third-party dependencies such as the Z3 uh, solver, which you have to install manually, and there is information about how to do that also on the GitHub wiki page. If you plan to use Mint from the perspective of the toolsmith, you can use the open API provided by the binary packages, but it is highly advisable you also download the source code so that you can look at different uh, examples there. Finally, if you plan to contribute on Mint, here's the few things that you should know. As I said, uh, Mint is hosted on GitHub. It has an open source and business friendly license, namely the Eclipse public license. There is currently one developer, Alessio, and occasional summer interns, students who worked on Mint. Uh, we are very open to external contributions that should be uh, submitted via GitHub's pull request mechanism. This brings us to the end of this webcast. Here are a few things that you should uh, hold as key takeaways about Mint. Mint is an interactive multi-level model management IDE. It provides various forms of automated user assistance and is highly extensible and customizable. It is surprisingly useful to do research and we welcome adopters and contributors. Thank you for watching this webcast about Mint.